Okay, the next part of today's procedure is gonna be examining the nasal cavity in two different ways. When we look inside the nasal cavity uh, in, our, in our patient here, Kevin, today, um, using the nasal speculum is gonna provide me with a view called anterior rhinoscopy. So what that means is that I can actually see in the front part of Kevin's nose, but just with the, my eye and the speculum gently opens up the nasal cavity so I can get a maximal view inside his nasal cavity. I'm gonna use the scope to show you what I see when I look inside Nick Kevin's, um, exam, uh, Kevin's nasal cavity with just the nasal speculum. We're gonna contrast that with what we would see when we look in with the scope. There's a monitor behind Kevin on his left side that you'll be able to see the view. So the first thing I'm gonna do is gently apply this inside Kevin's nasal cavity. So it stretches things open. And then basically, as I look inside the nasal cavity, we can see the nostril. And then we can see just about, that's all I would see if I look inside the nose with my, my uh, naked eye. So septum is on the left side, inferior terminates on the right side. Just start to get a little hint of the middle turbinate towards the back up around two o'clock. I'm gonna go ahead and view the opposite side. So this is Kevin's right nostril. When we open up, again, we're looking inside his nasal cavity. I can see his septum, you can see his inferior turbinate, and right back a little bit farther is the middle turbinate. But once again, this is what I would see if I look inside Kevin's nasal cavity without the scope. Now we're gonna contrast that with the scope. I'm gonna use a little alcohol wipe. This is gonna clean, but it's also gonna give us a little bit of a anti-fog property. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a better look inside the nasal cavity with the scope. So now I'm putting my fingers on Kevin's forehead. My other finger is just on the tip of Kevin's nose so I can guide the scope into the nasal cavity. So once again, inferior turbinate, Septum is on the left side. Kevin's got a little bit of a septal deviation or deflection that encroaches his breathing pathway on his left side. The little mucus is right there in front of us. I'm gonna go underneath that mucus, and right here is the middle turbinate. Kevin's middle turbinate is lateralized, meaning that it's, it's shifted off to his outside of his nose, which blocks the, the breathing pathways, but it also blocks the sinus drainage pathways from the sinuses above the eyes in his cheeks, between his eyes, and behind his eyes. We can go ahead and remove it and place it on the opposite side. So now on the nasal cavity on this side, we can see the septum. Here inferiorly, Kevin has a little bit of a septal spur, a little bit of a deviation that shifts off to the front part of the nose that blocks breathing pathway. Inferior turbinate is right behind. Middle turbinate is up above. And if we go back a little bit farther and look inferiorly, we can see that, se that Kevin also has a septal spur that is touching the inferior turbinate on that side. That's right in front of us. So now I'm gonna remove, we're gonna go back into the opposite side. So if I have to determine which side is gonna give me the best view to look in the back of nasal Kevin's nasal cavity, I'm gonna choose a side that has less blockage. So the septum is out of the way, so I can come inside the nasal cavity and come along the floor between the septum and the inferior turbinate. And as I slowly move back farther, I'm gonna be able to see the nasal cavity of the nasal pharynx. So right towards the back. The middle turbinate is right to the right hand side. Septum is to the left. Inferior turbinate's on the bottom to the right. And all the way in the back, we're gonna see Kevin's soft palate. So here, Kevin, I'm gonna have you say the letter K. K. And the word kick. Kick. So the soft palate is elevating with every word and every syllable. Now at the right, at three o'clock, is the opening for the eustachian tube. It's called the torus tubaris. Looks like there's a little mucus coming out of there in the back. And Kevin even has a little cyst up here, right there in front of us, up top there. That's not a cyst to worry about. That's where the adenoid tissue would live. Now if we would follow this all the way down along the bottom, right at the six o'clock mark, we would be going into the oral pharynx to view the vocal cords. So that's the extent of the nasal examination, but this is the beauty of what we can generate and what we can see inside the nasal cavity with a scope versus looking in the nasal cavity just in the front with the nasal speculum. So when we see patients in the office, oftentimes we're gonna ask the patients if we could do a scope 
even though it has an extra cost, it is a procedure, um, but it does give us that much more information to treat Kevin's nasal cavity conditions appropriately. Kevin, you did a great job. Thank you. Oh, thanks.